Hey folks, welcome back. Jerry once again here at Hilltop Firearms Training Center in Dover, Tennessee. Thank you for watching. Today is part three of our multi-part series dealing with the aftermath following the use of deadly force. Now, if you have not already watched parts one and two, I'm gonna go ahead and post the link in the description box below. I would highly recommend you watch those parts. If you are serious about your safety, if you're a, a responsibly armed citizen that is carrying a firearm to protect yourself and to pr protect others and protect your family, it's more than just carrying a gun. And that is what this entire series was about. In the first video, we focused on what to do in the, in the seconds following the use of deadly force where you were forced to defend yourself. It was a fight for your life what to do, what not to do. In the second video we, we discussed as law enforcement secures the scene and they take over, what to say and what not to say. How to be extremely cooperative, okay? And how you need to be careful in how you articulate what you say in regards to what just occurred. Well, today I wanted to expand more on that, and I'm talking about how memory can be affected following the moments after a violent encounter. You can liken it to anyone that has ever been in any kind of automobile collision. And when I was in law enforcement, I worked a lot of car wrecks, and sometimes, you know, many of them had injuries, but I'm talking even a simple accident where someone literally ran into somebody else, no, no, you know, it was an accident, but there was no injuries. How disoriented people were when they were trying to recollect what exactly occurred, the moments following that accident. So I felt it was necessary to expand on how memory is affected during such an encounter, especially if you just had to shoot somebody. You were in a fight for your life, and the next thing you know, there's a person or persons laying there on the ground, and you're the one that shot them. So let's talk just a little bit about as to why we need to be very cautious in how we answer the police questions as they're being posed to us while we're there still on scene. Now, in the, in the second part, we did say, you are to answer questions with relevance. Articulate to the best of your ability the details that led to why you just had to defend yourself, but then do not go any further because you need time to dissect that information that your eyes were perceiving as it unfolded. So let's talk a little bit about how the body reacts to stress. Uh, one of the most common stress hormones that we hear about uh, is adrenaline. Adrenaline gets dumped into your system and it puts you into a fight or flight mode. You are in survival mode. People have been able to do things they were not even capable of doing, but with, once that adrenaline hit their bloodstream, they were able to overcome and survive and, and basically be victorious over bad situations. Adrenaline increases your heart rate, respiratory, your breathing. Uh, sometimes you hear people say, well, I, you know, I had tunnel vision. Well, that means basically what they did was they lost the peripheral vision because they were transfixed on the, the, the possible threat in front of them. Well, there's another stress hormone that can be induced into the body naturally during such an encounter. It's called cortisol. But cortisol actually has a negative effect on memory functions. Uh, it actually has the ability to Im impair and confuse functions in the brain specifically geared towards our memory recollection. Stress can affect your cognitive functioning of the brain. Uh, what I'm saying is perception, memory, judgment, reasoning can be clouded as cortisol is being dumped into your bloodstream because other things are more important, such as surviving. So when police officers are on scene and they're asking you question after question, and they have all the, all the reason in the world to be doing so, there's a dead person laying there. They have questions, they need answers. Articulate what you did, but be very cautious as to saying too much and it may not even be accurate. So I did some research on how um, 
why people have difficulties remembering things, whether it's a car wreck or a shooting. Well, if enough cortisol has impaired your memory functions, the only thing that can fix it is sleep. Truly, deep sleep cycles. Now, I'm not talking about, let's think about this. You shot someone. Finally, everything has been settled for the day. Police took their reports. Maybe you were booked in, probably would be, uh, depending where you live. You go home that night. Well, you are still not in the right form of mind. You try to lay down and you're staring at the uh, ceiling and you're recounting what happened. And eventually though, you will become extremely exhausted and finally you will fall to sleep. And deep sleep, REM, rapid eye movement, where you literally are in a deep, restful sleep. Your brain's still working. And what it's doing is, it is consolidating. It's taking, it's almost like a computer where it's taking the files and putting them in their perspective areas. Um, basically, it has been known, I've researched a little bit, they said good to two good sleep cycles of like 48 hours later you go and you're now being questioned with your attorney present you may be surprised on details that you did not even see what the person was wearing something they may have said little things that were blocked from your memory during that ordeal can come back to you and that's the only reason I wanted to kind of put this video out there is because give yourself some time to piece this puzzle back together. Having a legal counsel, having an attorney by your side, they can advise you as to what and what to say and what not to say. But give yourself some time. You just went through a very traumatic event. Guys, I thank you for watching. If you want, post your comments below. Let's try to keep them professional. We'll try to pick this up again. Uh, as always, I thank you for watching, and I will see you on the range.